There's so many different ways to improve your speed. Heavy strength training, Olympic lifting, plyometrics, accelerations, the list goes on. The problem is, how do we know what we should be focusing on so that we make the most progress and don't waste our time? This is something I've been thinking about a lot recently and I wanna show you what I've learned. I'm gonna draw you a graph. One side represents velocity. We can think of this as how fast you're moving. The other side represents force. We can think of this as how much strength you're using. This line represents the relationship between moving very fast and producing high amounts of force. It's known as the force velocity curve. It indicates that when forces are high, velocity is low. And as velocity increases, forces decrease. This isn't anything new. If you're a coach, you're probably already familiar, but for everyone else, I'm gonna do my best to make it easy to understand. On one end of the curve, think of a one rep max squat. The forces are high and the velocity is low. On the other side, we have sprinting. Horizontal velocity is high, but horizontal forces are low. This concept applies to various movements, including lifting, jumping, and of course, sprinting. In order to figure out how to get faster, we need to understand what this graph is telling us about acceleration. Here is the sprint start. Horizontal velocity is low, and the athlete is putting high amounts of horizontal force into the ground, which is easy to observe and has been reported in multiple studies like this one, this one, and this one. Then as the athlete accelerates, the horizontal velocity increases and the amount of force being applied horizontally decreases, which we can see as they become upright. In order to improve our acceleration and run faster, we just need to figure out where along the curve we suck. This is done through force velocity profiling. Yeah, it sounds complicated, but it's actually not that hard to do. Before we continue, it's important we understand two things. One, force times velocity equals power. In other words, strength times speed equals this. Essentially, the more power an athlete has, the better their acceleration will be. To maximize power and improve acceleration, we just need to find out which one, force or velocity, is lacking the most. Simply put, force velocity profiling helps you figure out whether you need to focus on getting stronger or on converting your existing strength into speed. Previously, you needed expensive lab equipment to do this assessment. Fortunately, in recent years, researchers have outlined a method that doesn't require much equipment and just uses a mathematical formula. This method is completely free. I'll have a link in the description with the literature. But it does require a bit of work. On the other hand, if you wanna skip all that, you can just get the My Sprint app, which does all the work for you. It does cost a few dollars. I'm not affiliated and I don't make any money in any way. The only reason I'm recommending it is because it's already been validated as a reliable way to measure your FVP. Now you might be wondering, can I just test my split times? That's not enough and here's why. Two people can have the same exact 100 meter PR or 20 meter split time, but their FVP could look very different. For example, in this study, they had two players from an elite rugby team. Both had similar 20 meter times, yet the data revealed that their performance was completely different from one another. Player C applies more force, but reaches a lower speed, and player D reaches a higher speed, but needs to apply more horizontal force. Essentially, player C had a stronger push and initial steps. On the other hand, player D didn't have as strong of a start, but they were able to reach higher speeds. This study suggests that the training program designed for each athlete should target different capabilities. To put it simply, split times measure performance, they tell us what is happening, and FVP measures mechanics, and they tell us why this is happening. There's a lot more information that we can get from this assessment. In the next video, I'm gonna make my own FVP, go into further detail, and discuss what mistakes to avoid. In the meantime, I recommend checking out my video, Two Acceleration Exercises You Probably Haven't Tried, which shows you two things you can do based on science to improve your acceleration.